just picked up this used ThinkPad, and I'm going to install Arch on it. Let me explain. Greetings, and welcome to another thrilling episode of Veronica Explains. I'm Veronica, and today I'd like to try out Arch on this old ThinkPad E490. I decided to buy a laptop just to make it easier for me to make content for the channel because I find that occasionally I am struggling with the logic of getting a virtual machine to do something that a real machine would actually do. So I decided to pick up this ThinkPad for about $500 American from Tech Discounts, my local electronics recycler, and I think it was a pretty good deal. Anyway, I'm hoping we can do some cool content with this laptop in the future, maybe even some live shows. And I'm trying to think of what snappy nickname I should call this thing. So if you've got a snappy nickname in mind, leave a comment below with what you want to call it. While you're thinking about the most witty name for my new ThinkPad, go ahead and hit all those YouTube buttons like like and subscribe, because I'm new at this and it does help out my channel quite a bit. Anyway, I decided to buy a ThinkPad because, from the sounds of it, they last a pretty long time and they're pretty robust. I actually really like the look of this because it, it reminds me of my Aptiva that I had growing up, which was one of my favorite computers. It's probably still my favorite desktop look of all time. I'll find a picture and put it up. Anyway, yes, I'm going to be installing Arch on this at least right now. And the reason I've picked Arch is because I wanted a rolling release to test some GNOME stuff, not only for the channel, but also just for myself as I'm trying out different desktop environments just to see what's out there and, you know, see what, what's been happening. I've been a happy Pop! OS user for now about two years, and I, I do really like what they're doing. I think it's important, especially if I'm going to be creating content in this space, for me to try other things. If I had to choose a non-Debian-based distro for getting Bleeding Edge stuff, you know, it's hard to beat Arch. Plus, I haven't tried this new installer that I've heard so much about, which apparently you can just type Arch install and actually install Arch now, which sounds really cool, and I want to give it a try. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to install Arch on this ThinkPad, try out the new installer, which I've never seen before, and I haven't actually read any documentation on it either. I've literally just seen that you type Arch install and apparently it works. So we're going to give that a try, and I'm going to see how that works. Let's get this thing fired up. Got to get into the BIOS. It's not a BIOS. Whatever we call it now. Generic USB device. Let's pick Arch. Booting. So, I need to connect my wireless, so I'm going to use IWCTL, which it says to do right in there. I have to do that first before I do Arch install. That much I know. So, let's see. Help! I think I want device list. Okay, we need station WLAN zero scan. Scan for my network. I probably have to blur this out. Typing my password. I think I got the network set up, so now let's try that Arch install. See if it works. See if it works. This is exciting. Ooh. 26. US keyboard. Keyboard language. Let's do United States. Okay. Select a hard drive. Well, I think I want SDA. That looks like mine. So that's number one. Enter. Okay, wipe selected drive and use a best effort default partition layout. That sounds good. I remember having to do that in the installer last time I ran Arch, so this will be fun. 
Which one should your main partition use? Okay, that's exciting. I'm gonna keep it simple and do ext4. I don't want to make this too terribly complicated, and I'm not, I haven't done any reading into how Arch handles ButterFS. Um, that might be something I do in a future video, if you ask for it nicely. Ooh, disk encryption password. I'm gonna do disk encryption, because I like disk encryption. Would I like to use Grub as a bootloader instead of systemd boot? I do want to use Grub as a bootloader because it's the bootloader I know. Would I like to use swap on ZRAM? Sure, why not? Desired host name. Don't forget to leave a comment with what I should end up calling this computer. For now, I'm gonna go Veronica Arch. Boring. Enter root password. Yep, I'm gonna just disable root and create a super user because that's how I roll. Create a required super user. Me? Password secret. Nope, don't need an additional user. It's nice that they ask that. I don't know any other installers that ask about additional users you might want. That's kind of cool. Desktop. That's the way I'm going to want to go because I am doing this after all to test GNOME. I've got some ideas for a video coming up here that are going to require a vanilla GNOME that's pretty up to date. So I'm going to go with that here. Otherwise, I might pick something goofy like Sway or i3, you know, something tiling that I haven't tried in a while. But for now, I'm going to use GNOME. Server is an option. An Arch server would be an interesting challenge. Pre-programmed. Ooh, we're gonna use GNOME. Ooh, okay, it asks about all the different types. This is just a stock board without any graphics cards or anything, so I'm gonna go with the all open source version. Okay, I get to choose between Pipewire and Pulse Audio. Yeah, we're going with Pipewire. Ooh! I get to pick a kernel, I get to pick a kernel. I'm gonna go with a stock kernel because I do wanna experiment around with stuff later on. I'm, I don't wanna make this any more complicated than it needs to. I would say if I thought I was gonna be using this as my everyday laptop, I might go with the LTS kernel just because it's a little bit less work to manage. Only packages such as base, yep. You desire a web browser, you may specify it in the following prompt. Ooh, okay. When I've installed Arch manually, I have to at some point add things like Vim, otherwise I'm gonna be totally thrown off. And I'm betting that's what I'm gonna have to do here. So I'm gonna add those now. Hopefully that's enough. Let's do Firefox, it's a good one. Vim. I might live to regret this. But I think I'm just gonna go with Firefox and Vim. Okay, it's asking me if I want to use Network Manager. I'm. Let's use Network Manager. I think that makes sense. Valid time zone. You know, at the time I'm recording this, we just switched to daylight savings time, and that should be illegal, especially when you have a kid. NTP, sure. Okay, I think it's going. Time for some bop it. Today's bop it is bop it extreme two, which is my favorite bop it. accidentally hit this thing. I'm bad. 159. See, I'm trying to read. <laughs> I'm trying to read Arch. This Arch is easy enough to install while playing Bop It. You know, that's not bad. So far, this has been pretty slick. It, I have to say, it's nice not having to, you know, follow the Arch installer on one screen and then have a separate computer up just for the Arch Wiki to actually, you know, follow along with the bits that you're doing. Last time I installed Arch, that's what I had to do, and it, it was definitely some work. I could do it, but it, it was definitely a thing. What if I should do some more 
No, nope. it's picking plenty of packages. I might have more time for more bop at. Look at all that gnome. Gnome's kind of big. Ooh. It's asking me a question. That was fun. What I like to chirrut into, is that how you pronounce that? Chirrut? I mean, it's change root, but like, how do you pronounce that? Leave a comment with how I should be pronouncing that word, because I think it's chirrut, but I might be weird. No, I don't want to. I just want to restart it and see if it works. Why not? <laughs> you may now reboot. Thank you. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Okay, I think we got Arch. We got my encryption, which is good. Ooh, well, this looks promising. I bet I bet the capture card's not showing it because it, now it thinks it's a second screen. I'm gonna have to set up mirroring. I got a window. Okay, I'm signing in. That sure looks like a gnome. Let me set up that mirroring so that way everybody can see. There we go. That only took like a half hour. Honestly, that wasn't bad and it wasn't a lot of work, which is impressive. Just see how well this is working. Let's try something like software. Welcome, okay, it installed software without any issues. The last time I installed Arch with GNOME, I had to do a bunch of extra work just to get the software center installed. So that's super neat. This is pretty cool. Deja dupe. Let's install LibreOffice. Okay, let's see, let's see what source. Okay, it looks like it's just installing it from the Arch repo. So I'm guessing there's a little bit more work to do in order to get Flatpak installed if you wanna use that, or the AUR. I, I don't know that GNOME has any utilities for that, so that's something I'll have to dig into. Let me know if you want me to do a video where I set up AUR and kind of play around with some of the fancy features. Maybe I'll set up Yay or something, and we'll just go through that together. It's installing. At least it says it's installing. Potentially unsafe. Scary. Let's get that. Hey, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Let's just see if it's picking up my microphone. It looks like it's picking up my microphone. That's fancy. That's all stuff that, you know, when you used to do Arch, that stuff was hard, and this installer made this super easy, which is fantastic. I've gotta say, I am super impressed with this Arch install script. This took all of the real guesswork out of installing Arch. The installer definitely isn't as pretty as the graphical installers that you're used to from distros like Pop OS, Ubuntu, and Fedora. Yes, Fedora is a pretty installer, Arch is all about simplicity and keeping things simple. And this did that, and it seems to have picked some pretty sane defaults that just work well, at least in terms of the GNOME experience, which was much easier to install here than through vanilla Arch, which, or at least classic Arch, the way Arch used to be, the, the manual way. I'm impressed. This is, this was fantastic. If you're new to Arch and wanna play around with it, I can't recommend this enough. I, I think this was a pretty good experience. That being said, if your goal with Arch is to learn all of the ins and outs of the system, you know, really dive in to Linux and how it works, you might wanna try installing it manually because that does give you a certain appreciation for all the workings and the ins and outs that go on here. That's gonna do it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you've installed Arch using the Arch install script, or if you'd prefer to do it another way, because I think this was a fantastic way to do it, especially if you've never done the manual install process of Arch, but I wanna know what you think. Leave me a comment with how you feel Arch should be installed. If you like it this way, if you prefer another installer script, or if you'd rather everybody just do it the manual way, do it the classic way, and just kind of learn as they go. Anyway, at least in my opinion, 
I'm pretty impressed with how this installer script worked, but I don't know why it would surprise me that the folks at Arch made such a fantastic installer script. I mean, they care about Linux, and Linux is awesome. And so are you. One, two, three, four! I'm new at this whole YouTube thing, but I am so grateful for the folks who've supported me on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Veronica Explains. I also just launched a merch store where you can get nerdy t-shirt designs I'm working on like this one at vkc.sh slash merch. And if there's something you'd like to see me cover in a future video, please don't forget to leave me a comment. Thank you so much. Yeah.